Now that Obsidian Mobile has been released on the App Store for iPad and iPhone, also it's been released for Android. I thought it would be a good idea to condense my long 26 minute video into a rapid fire overview. So Obsidian is a cross platform plain text note taking tool. So all the notes are written in Markdown and it also creates relationships between knowledge based on links, tags and other relationships as well. This is an example of a markdown page in preview mode in Obsidian. This is the same note in the markdown view. Obsidian for mobile has about 95% of the functionality of the full desktop app. There are a few minor differences such as not being able to export to PDF and not all of the plugins currently working. Plus, there is a command palette which is optimised for the touch screen and that is only available on the mobile version. All notes in Obsidian are kept in a folder. This is called a vault. When you first start using Obsidian, you need to create or specify a vault where you will store all of your notes. You also need to say whether you are going to keep these on iCloud so that all of your notes can be synced between all of your iDevices. This is what it looks like in Obsidian when you create a new vault. You have to give it a name and decide whether you want to store it in iCloud. In Obsidian, links are first class citizens. If you create a link to a brand new page that doesn't already exist, it will create that page for you without you having to remember to save anything. You can also create links to all of your pages within your folder or vault. This is me creating a new note. This is me creating a link to existing content such as next year's plans. This is me creating a link to a brand new note, which doesn't already exist. When I click on it, the page is created. Tags are key words that you can use to categorize your notes. You can have one page with multiple tags and this allows a piece of information to belong to more than one subject category at the same time. This allows for flexible relationship building between content and a view of information belonging to more than one category at the same time. So in this example here you can see the page about painting gloss paint has two tags, one about home and one about decorating. I could add other tags if I wanted to. Obsidian also makes use of backlinks. That means that each page has a log of all the different notes that are linking to it. This helps to create deeper relationships between our knowledge. This is a page with highlights from a book I've been reading. If I go onto the menu option here, I can see the other pages that it is linked from. These are called backlinks. So for example, on the 2nd of June and on the 15th of July, I wrote a journal entry where I was linking to those to the highlights page. Obsidian also has a graph of view that allows you to see an overview of links between your different notes. So you can see clusters of relationships between all of your knowledge. This is the graph view where you can see the relationship or an overview between all of your pages. You can search for text by keywords, titles or tags. This is a search for text. I can search for keywords. So I am finding all of my pages which have the word China in. 
I can also do a search by tag so I can look for all of my journal entries that have been tagged journal. Obsidian makes use of plugins to extend use. Obsidian make core plugins that are enabled by default, such as Graph View. And there is also a larger and increasing library of community plugins made by the community that also extend the use of the system. Within settings, you can see which core plugins have been enabled. You can also look at community plugins to browse, download and enable which utilities you would like to enable, such as the mind map tool. Change the appearance of your Obsidian setup by going to appearance in settings and downloading and installing a theme. You can change existing themes or even build your own from scratch as they are all made out of CSS. Obsidian lets you change the look and feel of your vault by going into settings and going into appearance and downloading and choosing a theme. Most themes have a dark and a light version, but if you know your CSS, you can also change existing themes or even create your own from scratch. I'm just going to enable the Dracula theme and then I'm going to look at a note so you can see what it looks like on my index page. You need to be a little bit careful because not all themes look and play nicely on iOS and iPadOS. You can embed content from elsewhere in your vault. This can include PDFs, images, or even other files, or even parts of another note, such as a block. This process of embedding content is known as transclusion, and it allows you to reuse content throughout your vault. Here is an example of a PDF which I have embedded into a, an Obsidian page. Notice how I use the exclamation mark before the link. This is called Transclusion. There is a friendly community of experts who have helped me in my journey to become more familiar with Obsidian and knowledge management. This includes an active Discord channel as well as a variety of YouTube video channels such as Brian Jenks, Effective Remote Work at Santi Younger and Nick Milo's Linking Your Thinking. Thank you for watching my video. If you like what you've seen, please comment, like and subscribe. I'll update in a few days.